All electrochemical reactions contain transfer of electrons. These reactions are called redox reactions. Sometimes you might find it difficult to distinguish the reduction and oxidation process. Does the oxidation happen at the cathode or at the anode? Does this change depending on the situation? Where to place the plus and minus sign in the electrolytic cell? And what changes with the galvanic cell? This video provides clarification. Oxidation is the removal of electrons. Reduction is uptake of electrons. You can memorize this with the term oil rig. Oil stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and rig stands for reduction is gain of electrons. A reducing agent reduces something else and gets oxidized itself. An oxidizing agent oxidizes something else and gets reduced itself. We can say for the reduction potential, a strongly negative reduction potential implies a rather strong reducing agent. You can memorize this better by drawing an energy diagram. We can say that the half reactions with a more negative potential are in a higher energy level than half reactions with a more positive potential. Let's assume we have these two half reactions. They both have a certain reduction potential. We put the more negative potential higher on the energy diagram. When we leave this system entirely up to itself, the electrons tend to flow downhill in energy. The iron gets oxidized and the electrons flow towards the oxygen. The iron is the reducing agent and the oxygen is the oxidizing agent. Electron transfers happen on the electrodes in electrochemical cells. The reduction happens always and without exception at the cathode. The oxidation always happens at the anode. You can memorize this by connecting the words same as in a crossword puzzle. The positive and negative pole change depending on the type of electrochemical cell. Electric current is taken up from an external source into the system in an electrolytic cell. A non-spontaneous reaction happens in this case. We have two electrodes. We have just seen that the reduction always happens at the cathode. Reduction means gain of electrons. Therefore, the electrons have to flow towards this electrode. The opposite happens at the anode. There we have the oxidation, which means that electrons are given off to the cable. In this cell, energy is pumped into the system with a battery. The electrons flow uphill in energy from the anode to the cathode. The cathode has a more negative potential, therefore the negative pole is located at the cathode. Let's take the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride as an example. The chloride is oxidized, yielding chlorine gas. The electrons are conducted to the battery. The battery puts the electrons into a higher energy level. The high energy electrons are now able to reduce water, yielding hydrogen gas. We have stored energy from the battery in the hydrogen bond. A spontaneous chemical reaction happens in a galvanic cell. Electric energy is released to an external current. Again, we have an anode with the oxidation and a cathode with the reduction. Both half reactions happen in two different compartments. We need a so-called salt bridge for balancing charges. In a galvanic cell, electrons flow downhill in energy, but as before, from the anode to the cathode. In a zinc copper cell, zinc has a more negative reduction potential. This half reaction is energetically higher than copper. Therefore, the zinc electrode is the anode and the copper electrode is the cathode. The zinc is being oxidized and zinc 2 plus ions are released into the solution. Electrons flow over the load towards the copper cathode. There, copper 2 plus ions are reduced to copper zero. In this cell, the negative pole is the anode because the zinc has a more negative potential. 
The oxidation potential of zinc is the reduction potential of zinc 2 plus with opposite sign. Therefore we get a potential of the cell of plus 1.1 volts. A positive cell potential leads to a negative delta T. This means the process happens without external influence spontaneously. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with someone else to help them understand the subject better. If you have more questions or feedback, write a comment in the section below. If you haven't studied enough yet, subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.